I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another one of our video tutorials. We're still on the topic of fibres in this particular video section and today we're going to be talking about an overview of chemical pulping. Previously we did an overview of mechanical pulping. So I'm going to start off in the same way with a, a simple diagrammatic tree of all the pulping processes so that you can see where chemical pulping really fits in. So here we go with our overview. Pulping, more than one type of pulping. Mechanical is one type of pulping. And mechanical itself can be divided up into two types of pulping. One is groundwood pulping. With groundwood pulping, you're dealing with the whole tree. So you take the whole tree and you press it up against a grindstone under varying conditions. And you may remember it was uh, in Germany and in Canada that this idea came to fruition simultaneously but independently. They both uh, inventors made groundwood pulp. They both sold it or tried to sell it to a, a newsprint mill for making uh, newsprint, obviously. So, the first method that was invented was SGW, stone groundwood. So there, the simplest of all the systems, a big grindstone revolving round, a big log pressed against it. Um, as the grindstone turns around, it generates friction against the log. The friction creates heat. The heat softens the lignin and then the abrasive surface rips the fibres out of that softened lignin. The surface of the grindstone is washed and the whole thing is constantly repeated. Following on from that, they came up with the idea of the thermal groundwood process. And this really involves soaking the logs in hot water prior to or as they are being ground down. Putting hot water there just creates extra heat, extra energy to go into the system. So the lignin gets hotter, therefore it becomes softer and therefore you do less damage as you rip the fibres out of the tree trunk. And then the final groundwood process was PGW, pressurised groundwood. Here you did two things to increase the energy input. One was to apply extra pressure to the tree trunks so that you got more friction, therefore more heat. And the other was the system was injected with live steam, you know, with steam under pressure to put even more heat into it. So the heat from the steam and the heat from the extra pressure made the lignin softer still. So when the fibres came out, they were even less damaged. Average fibre length was increased. More fibre fibre crossovers, stronger piece of paper. <clears throat> So all those groundwood pulping processes rely on using a whole tree trunk. But it's not very convenient using a whole tree trunk. So all the other methods we're going to talk about, the refiner method, uh, later on we'll see the chemical method and the hybrid method, all rely on taking a tree trunk and bringing it down to chips around this size, similar chips. And then we feed these chips into the wood pulp, into the, uh, the equipment. <clears throat> so the first refiner process that we used was called RMP, Refined Mechanical Pulp. So just like SGW, rather than taking a tree trunk and feeding it against an abrasive surface, you take some wood chips and you feed them against an abrasive surface. The abrasive surface here being, of course, a disc refiner. So two discs, single disc refiner. You feed the wood chips into the eye of the pair of discs. And as they work their way out, they get bashed and bashed and bashed again and reduced to, to individual fibres. The other refiner method was TMP, thermomechanical pulp. And the idea of thermomechanical pulp, just like with the logs, you put more heat in it 
so that you soften the logs, so you soften the lignin more, so that you get less damage when you tear all the fibres out. So with TMP, with thermomechanical pulp, you actually um, inject these wood chips with steam to put heat into it prior to feeding it into the eye of the disc refiner. Anyway, in this uh, tutorial, this is where we really put in our focus today. It's on chemical pulping. So with chemical pulping, there are three types of chemical pulping. The first one that was ever invented, you may remember at Frogmore Paper Mill in the UK and first used in the, the USA, was the soda process. And it basically involved stewing up these wood chips in caustic soda to dissolve away the lignin. Now one of the good things about the mechanical pulping processes is that if you start off with a ton of tree, you'll end up with almost a ton of fibre. With the chemical pulping processes, you dissolve a lot of the tree and throw it away. So you start off with a ton of tree and you're lucky if you end up with half a ton of fibre. So that's doubled your fibre cost already without the cost of the chemicals and the energy and the uh, environmental considerations for cleaning up. So the soda process was the first process that was invented. Today it's not used for wood at all, but it is used for what we call non-wood fibres or annual crops. So following on from the soda process was the sulphite process a process invented by a Swedish chemist. Whereas the soda process was pH 14, sodium hydroxide, very, very alkaline. The sulfite process used sulfurous acid. So the pH was down at one or two. So the other extreme of the pH scale. But that's an incredibly uh, aggressive pulping process. And as we'll see later on, um, it destroys things. And then following the sulfite process, the sulfate process was invented. A German chemist invented the sulfate process. The paper that he made with the pulp by his process was much stronger than the paper made with the pulp from the sulfite process. So this German chemist decided to call his process the strong process because it gave a much stronger piece of paper. And the German word for strong is craft. So that's why we hear now so often about craft pulps and craft paper. It means from the tree to the fibre has followed the sulphate route. And round about 95% of all pulping done today is uses the sulphate process route. Well, chemical pulping anyway. In between the two methods, in between the mechanical pulp and the chemical pulp, there is also hybrid pulping. But we're not going to talk about hybrid pulping really at level two, other than to say uh, what two of the processes are and what they were typically used for. So one of the hybrid pulping methods is known as CTMP, chemi-thermo-mechanical pulp. So you take wood chips like this, you heat them up with steam, you put them in some hot water with cooking chemicals for a short time and then the chemicals attack the lignin but not too much and before they've done too much damage you then put it through the eye of a disc refiner so you finish it off mechanically. Typically used for magazines and printing papers things like that. And then the final pulping method is NSSC, Neutral Sulfite Semi-Chemical. And this was the pulp that was primarily used for fluting in corrugated medium. So if you think about a cardboard box, the wall of a cardboard box consists of two flat pieces of paper with a wiggly bit in the middle. That wiggly bit is called the fluting. And the NSSC method was particularly good for fluting because it leaves some lignin in and that contributes to the stiffness that helps retain that fluting shape. However, um, let's move on. 
The processes we're going to talk about in this section are the sulfite process and the sulfate process. And we'll just look at the uh, advantages and disadvantages. First of all, the sulfite process. As I mentioned earlier, it's a very, very aggressive process. Very low pH, one or two. And what it does is it removes most of the lignin in the fiber. And that's good in a way, because the more lignin re you remove, then the less bleaching you need to do later on, because it's the lignin that causes the discoloration in, uh, in fibers or in the sheet. So it removes the lignin so much that you only need typically three bleaching stages to get it white enough to be acceptable. The other thing it does, because it's so aggressive, is it destroys the primary wall of a fibre. Now, if you remember, I've talked about fibres before. The outer wall is the primary wall, just one or two layers thick. Inside that is the secondary wall. And there are three parts to the secondary wall, the S1, the S2 and the S3. The S1 is four to six layers, the S2, 30 to 150 layers, and the S3 is exactly the same as the S1, two to four layers, oh, sorry, four to six layers. Um, the primary wall, although it's so thin, is incredibly strong. It's almost like having chicken wire wrapped around the fiber. And when you come to refine fibers, you really need to destroy and remove the primary wall before you can truly start refining and pushing water inside the fiber and carrying out the internal and external fibrillation. So the good thing about the sulfite process, having destroyed the primary wall, those fibres refine very easily and very quickly. The other thing the sulphite process does, as well as destroying the primary wall, which is good, it destroys the hemicellulose, which is bad. The hemicellulose contributes to a lot of the strength of a sheet of paper. And at the end of this particular tutorial, I'll show you exactly how the hemicellulose functions. Now, because the fibres are in an acidic environment, many of the group of chemicals that we call extractives are themselves acid in nature. So because you've got these acidic chemicals in an, in an acidic solution, it suppresses the dissolution of those, uh, those acidic materials. And so they stay in the fibre. Later on, when the mill buys a sulfite pulp and starts to use it. The pH in the process is probably more alkaline. Those materials then come out of the fibre and they form stickies, stickies in pipes, stickies in pumps, stickies on wires, stickies that will come out in the felts. So uh, it's not really a good thing to have all those stickies there. So the sulfite process does contribute to sticky problems on the machine. And finally, the sulfate process, it's much less aggressive. It's less aggressive even than the soda process. So around about maybe pH 11, 12, soda process. So it's less aggressive. Because it's less aggressive, it removes less lignin. And because it removes less lignin, we need to do more bleaching, maybe up to six stages of bleaching to get to an acceptable level of whiteness or brightness. Because it's less aggressive, it does not destroy the primary wall of the fiber. So that means when you buy this pulp, the primary wall is still intact. And when you put it into a beater or in through a refiner, the first thing you've got to do is to destroy that primary wall, put all that work in to just destroying the primary wall before you can truly start to refine your fiber. The other thing it does is it does not destroy the hemicellulose. And this was the key to the success of this process. Because it leaves the hemicellulose intact, 
that's what gives you the stronger piece of paper and as I said uh, in the last slide at the end of this um, presentation I'll show you exactly how that works and the other thing it does of course is the extractive materials the acidic extractive materials in the fiber because this is alkaline it reacts with them and it encourages them to dissolve and go out into this particular uh, process liquid and it removes it from the fiber so that when you get it in the mill you do not have the same stickage problems as you do from a sulfite process so to finish off now i said i'll tell you a little bit hemicellulose and how it works remember cellulose itself is a polymer of just glucose molecules glucose 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 several thousand sometimes Hemicellulose is a much smaller molecule, completely soluble, usually made up of two or three different types of sugar molecule. So I'm just going to use the word hemicellulose in this little, in this end of presentation, just to explain to you what it does. So here we have the surface of one fiber and on the surface of the fiber are some hydroxyl groups. Here is the surface of another fiber and on that fiber there are also hydroxyl groups and what happens is when you're forming your sheet hydrogen bonding occurs so we see here you get this bonding effect between the negative oxygen and the positive hydrogen the negative oxygen and the positive hydrogen so that's a hydrogen bond that's the thing that holds fibers together in the sheet you know so these OH groups are a little bit further away, but you'll also get it here. And these OH groups are a little further away, but you'll also get it here. But these OH groups at the ends there, this gap is too big. So the OH group here is totally unaware of the existence of that OH group. And same over here. So the strength of that fiber fiber bond is dictated by these OH groups, how many of them there are. Now, when hemicellulose has come along, they will sit in that gap there, and they'll sit in that gap there. Hemicelluloses, just like cellulose, are bristling with these OH groups everywhere. So what will now happen is you'll get hydrogen bonding between these two OH groups, this one being on the hemicellulose and between these two OH groups this one being on the hemicellulose so you've created an extra bond between the fiber through the hemicellulose and the same at this side that will therefore increase the strength of the paper so thank you for watching this video i hope you uh, found it interesting uh, please enjoy our other videos please feel free to uh, comment and keep sending in your requests i will get round to the requests but my priority at the moment is to finish these level two videos for some students who are taking the uh, level two exam in november bye bye